2023, what a year. As many great games as it had almost world-ending events, and let me tell you, it had quite a few almost world-ending events. <laughs> oh, I really need to quit these. So I'll tell you something, let's take a look at the whole year. The highs, the lows, the red falls, all of it. Starting with January. The year kicked off with a Microsoft and Bethesda Direct announcing a raft of brand new games including the unbelievably beautiful Hi-Fi Rush which launched immediately after the announcement. It was a huge surprise for Xbox players because they'd almost forgotten what a new game is. Google Stadia, the cloud streaming game service definitively ended in January. All hardware and software purchases were refunded and all those who'd bought Marvel's Avengers on Stadia were awarded a medal for bravery in the face of boredom. Oh, Godspeed. And of course, at the end of January, PS5 exclusive for Spoken was released. Now, I was taught that if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. But um, look, that's unfair because there was lots of positives about for Spoken, like... um. Hey. The month of St. Valentine saw the incredibly exciting opening of Super Nintendo World in California, the first Nintendo-themed US theme park. But who is it for? You know, it's really for everybody. I mean, it's been really rewarding. I've seen kids come out at six years old and they come out in the land and they scream and I've seen 50 year olds come out and scream. Mm, you think they're screaming now, wait until Kirby gets into the American spirit. The PlayStation VR 2 was released in February with an RRP of $549.99, a price point more expensive than the console you need to actually play it. Creating a paradox in which the only people who can afford it first have to scalp their PS5. God bless Nintendo, who heard the pleas of the people begging for a Metroid Prime remaster on Switch and dutifully answered those calls in February. About four years after hearing them, but still, praise be, better late than never. Thank you, Nintendo. If you're enjoying any of the pish that I'm currently spewing, then my overlords have asked that I encourage you to subscribe to the FGS channel. Go on, it's Christmas. Don't make me beg, for fuck's sake. Resident Evil 4. With the Resident Evil 4 remake, Capcom have walked this impossible tightrope of of paying respect to one of gaming's all-time classics while still making something that feels fresh and inventive and new and my hat is going to fall off. Oh, nope, I've just got a horn now. But most importantly, and arguably most impossible, is that it doesn't replace the original. You know, the original is still as relevant as ever, but the remake is like this perfect companion piece. Honestly, I, I can't think about it for too long because if I do, just the sheer complexity of that achievement, it's just, it's just going to send me to the other side of madness and I promised myself that that would not happen again this year. Look, I don't want to see all of gaming's classics remade until the end of time, but if they're as good as the Resident Evil 4 remake, well, I won't be too mad. Dead Island 2 released in April, a game announced all the way back when Jack the Ripper was still active. But did all those years of development give us a classic? Let's look and see. Oh. Eh. Um, well, it's better than any game I've ever made. Star Wars Jedi Survivor was also released in April, a slick slice of Star Wars action that does an admirable job at fighting back against Star Wars fatigue. Even if it does contain a bizarre garden management simulator. What does this game think it is? Harvest Moon? Look at him, he's heading for that small Harvest Moon. That's no Harvest Moon. Legendary Entertainment, the production company behind such blockbusters as Dune and the Dark Knight trilogy, announced that they've secured the rights to the Street Fighter franchise. So let's look forward to a sepia toned epic that somehow leads to an emotional climax in which two combatants pummel a car into scrap. May also saw the release of Redfall. Now, some people saw Redfall as a disappointing release from one of gaming's top talents, Arcane Studios. But come on, folks, give them a break. Making games is hard, and how many great games have Arcane given us in the past? Yeah, everyone makes mistakes. And at least Arcane and Microsoft were trying something new with Redfall rather than making, I don't know, Lego Call of Duty or something. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Hogwarts Legacy also released in May and it offered up an interesting moral dilemma. Is it okay to buy a fun looking well made RPG from a talented development team, even if it ultimately supports she who shall not be named? You know, it's a tough one, but I think if we're honest with ourselves, there's only really one answer to this question. 
Wait until November when it's released on Switch and everyone's forgotten that they care. But by far the biggest release in May was The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, it's said that Tears of the Kingdom came about when the team at Nintendo were developing the DLC for Breath of the Wild, that the scope and scale of all the ideas they had were just so big that they had to make a brand new game, and that, that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like a game built upon a game. It is huge, and you can dive from the highest point of the game down to the deepest, darkest depths with absolutely no load screens. I mean, that's crazy. This is hardware that sometimes struggles to run its own eShop. But at times it can feel like a remix of Breath of the Wild or like a second part of a double album. And I genuinely don't see that as a negative. Part of me does wonder if you'd get more out of this game if you hadn't played Breath of the Wild. You know, after Breath of the Wild I said to myself, nah, this one's good, but the next Zelda, oof, that might be the best Zelda game ever. And after playing Tears of the Kingdom, I'm instead saying, no, I think I was wrong. I think, I think the next Zelda... I think that one could be the best Zelda game ever made. But hey ho, I guess I just have to accept these amazing masterpieces for the seminal moments in gaming that they are. What a shame. If I'm honest, not a lot happened in June and July. So let's take this time to remember those that we lost in the world of gaming. In 2023, Suicide Squad, delayed to 2024. Alone in the Dark, delayed to 2024. Skull and Bones, delayed to 2024. <laughs> yeah, right, I'll believe it when I see it. The 3DS and Wii U eShop. Oh, fuck sake, I still had a Club Nintendo free game voucher to use. Shit. Charles Martinet as the voice of Mario. Uh, he, he He's not dead, he's just retired from playing Mario. We should, sorry, can we just highlight that? He's, he is, he's, Charles Martinet is very much alive. He's just not playing Mario anymore. I don't even know why he's in this bit. I mean, it's, it's only going to cause confusion. Who thought of that? Baldur's Gate 3 is released and Gaming's Illuminati, by that I mean PC gamers, immediately crown it Game of the Year in August. I'd love to know if I agree, but I'm waiting for the beautiful physical release that's coming next year, quite specifically on console. Do I have a machine capable of playing it on PC? Why yes, yes I do, but I made a blood oath many, many years ago to never play video games on any machine that could also run Microsoft Excel. Sorry Baldur's Gate 3. I don't break a promise. Sega also announced in August that they'd acquired Rovia, the production company best known for their work on the Angry Birds franchise. Sega there, always on the pulse of what gamers are excited about. Rumour has it in 2024 they're also set to acquire Nokia because of their hot new game, Snake. Lies of P, a Souls-like reimagining of the Pinocchio story, releases and scratches the itch of those hoping and wishing for a Bloodborne 2. I actually have an idea of a very similar game myself, retelling the story of the Wizard of Oz through the perspective of the Tin Man, but played like an armoured core game. Those flying monkeys don't know what's coming. Video game engine maker Unity introduced a pricing change which would see developers charged every single time one of their games is installed. So the gaming community calmly get together, discuss and respond by saying, yeah, no worries, Unity, two sec, let me get you that extra money. Uh, aye, there it is. There's your extra money. Enjoy that. Merry Christmas. Unity respond by rolling back the changes and then their chief exec resigns. Way! Todd Howard pulls what's known in the industry as a Todd Howard by hyping us all up for a game which ultimately played like 2010's greatest shooting mechanics mixed with all the excitement of a DVD menu and conversations with characters who look a bit like waxworks made out of fleshlights. There's no denying that Starfield has that usual Bethesda charm to it. You kind of can't help but love it at points. But it does feel like Bethesda need to figure out a way to bring their games into the modern day. So, fingers crossed for Elder Scrolls 6 then, when we get to play it in, I don't know, 20, 45 or something. Before we knew it, it was October, and as usual, it's the month where all the heavy hitters are released. Super Mario Wonder arrived, reinventing the style and feel of 2D Mario games to create one of the Switch's tightest feeling platformers. They say an elephant never forgets, but do they forgive? Well, I hope so, because I launched Mario into a brick wall after my 76th attempt at that f***ing final special level. I've got to be invisible for it, are you f***ing kidding? 
Spider-Man 2 releases on the very same day, a slick, exciting blockbuster experience that raises the bar for superhero adventures. Or it would if I could tear myself away from doing photo shoots at Aunt May's grave. Oh, I tell you, so addictive. The acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft is completed following approval from the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, basically meaning that Microsoft and Xbox can continue their takeover of the world. Mark my words, you will wake up in 2026 and the only way that you can legally make breakfast is to put bread in your Xbox and then make sure that you're signed up to the Xbox Toast Pass for £12.99 a month. The MetaQuest 3 is released with innovative new pass-through technology which allows you to perfectly see the outside world while wearing your VR helmet and admire the disgusted look of your partner as you become what can only be described as the walking ick while playing Beat Saber. Remedy combines their unique ingenuity with some cleverly stolen mechanics from the Resident Evil remakes to make one of the best survival horror games that we have seen in years. What a joy it is to play a well-written video game though, especially when most games feel like Transformers films written exclusively by incels. November sees the announcement of the PS5 Slim, which looks a bit like Sony tried to slash the price, missed, and instead slashed the console. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered Hyper Turbo Edition is also announced in November with hilariously similar comparison pictures. I can only imagine that that darkness comes from the squint you do when you see the price of it. What? Another 60 quid? It's just the same game? A surprising release of a game that's actually quite fun in November is Robocop Rogue City because while Robocop was a vision of dystopian horror in the 80s, in 2023 it feels like a breezy, optimistic, cheery look at life compared to the horrors we have to live through today akin to reading an Enid Blyton book or having a picnic. Look, this is going to be no one's game of the year but it is definitely my pleasant surprise of the year which in some ways is better. It's not, but in some ways it is. And that finally takes us to December. December sees the annual Game Awards come along and oh my god, no one cares because there's a Grand Theft Auto trailer! Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming out Tuesday the 5th of December! Nothing else in life matters! Oh my god, it's been 10 years! 10 years since that Grand Theft Auto game, I'm so hungry for it! In the end, sadly, some crypto bro leaked the trailer, so Rockstar just decided to release it early with a tweet that reads a little bit like they're your partner and they're in a huff. Yeah, fine, someone's leaked the trailer, so please just watch it here or something, I don't know, I didn't care. What followed was a minute and a half that gave us a good look at modern day Vice City, with a heavy emphasis on the role that social media will play in the world. Some people think this might be too stressful, too much like the real world. Nonsense. If I ever find myself getting stressed by a game, you know what I do? I go for a lovely bowling session with my favourite Serbian cousin. Wait a minute. Sad news for Virgins as their favourite industry event, the E3 Games Showcase, joins Kevin Spacey and Ezra Miller by being officially, full-blown, cancelled. Ah oh well, at least we can look forward to it appearing on the Joe Rogan experience sometime soon. After numerous delays and potentially shady practice, Fantastic released the day before into early access before closing the entire studio only a few days later and pulling the game off Steam entirely. The game itself is reviewed terribly, but the lovely folks at Games Radar find the silver lining by highlighting the easy inventory system, which turns out to be a default asset for Unreal Engine 5. Honestly, you could not write comedy this good if you tried. Back to the Game Awards though, which had some exciting reveals of its own. Like the new game from Hideo Kojima and Jordan Peele. Wait a minute, is that...? Get this hat off! Get my other hat! Where's my other hat? Is that the same door from PT? Did Hideo Kojima just walk through the same door from PT? Oh my god. Say what you want about Hideo Kojima, but there is no one else in gaming that can get you this excited about walking through a door. And guess what, OD is an Xbox exclusive. <laughs> it might not have been the best year for Microsoft, but oof, all is forgiven. You've finally given Kojima a home for his horror masterpiece, we've been waiting about 10 years for this. Where have you been Sony? Eh? What's been happening there? So I tell you what Microsoft, you know what? You know what? You deserve a reward. So before I go, I think it's time that I name my 2023 game of the year, which of course has to go to Redfall. 
Love you, Microsoft. Love you. Corporate shell? What do you mean, corporate shell? So that's about it for 2023. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you've got this far. Please do consider subscribing, check out some more videos on the FGS channel, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a great Christmas, an amazing new year, and I'll see you again in 2024 for some more like this. Oh, I said, honestly, I only do these on a night out.